How's it going guys? Cody guys, back again, dropping out another video. Right guys, um, this is a story in the Bristol Live, a link in the description below like I always do. Headline reads, Bristol prison officers smuggled £20,000 worth of drugs for inmates at a time where a prisoner had overdosed. Kevin Crehan arrived just as a corrupt prison officer was busted. HMP Bristol was awash with illegal drugs and phones when an inmate who died of an overdose was first transferred there because a corrupt prison officer had been smuggling them in, an inquest has heard. The scale of the drug problems at the Hawfield prison was laid bare at the inquest into the death of Kevin uh, Crehan by the very person in charge of security at the jail. Crehan, 35, died in uh, late December of 2016, just weeks after being transferred to the Hawfield jail. The first day of a two-week uh, inquest into his death heard he died of a drugs overdose thanks to a cocktail of five prescription drugs, particularly methadone and diazepam. An inquest jury heard he'd been doing well in his efforts to get off drugs during the first months of his sentence, served at Guy's Marsh Prison in Dorset. Uh, the inquest was told he was transferred to Bristol Prison on the last day of November 2016. Giving evidence, sorry, giving evidence to his inquest was Joanna Haddon, the head of security at HMP Bristol. She was cross-examined by Mikel Parr, representing the Crehan family. He asked her exactly how illegal and illicit drugs found their way into the prison. She described numerous various ways in which drugs enter the cells and said that at the end of 2016, November, just days before Crehan arrived at the prison, a prison officer had been discovered smuggling around £20,000 worth of drugs and phones into the prison to sell to inmates. That prison officer was subsequently sent to prison themselves for two and a half years. It meant that around the time Cregan arrived, prisoners had little trouble getting their hands on illegal drugs. Miss Haddon said that the corrupt route that men had meant to end the long-standing practice of friends and family throwing illegal drugs over the walls of the prison, a strategy that returned in the months after the corrupt officer supply route was busted. But she said that there'd been another other suspicious officer or staff at the prison. She spoke of other people who worked there bring them into prison about who had intelligence or suspicion. There've been a number, there's been members of staff who don't work within the prison staff themselves who, while they haven't been arrested, have left or stopped working there. And there's intelligence that there's a route that, that's ended, she explained. Mr. Poir asked if there was a particular problem at Bristol Prison of staff turning a blind eye to prisoners accessing or taking drugs. You would like to think not, but I'm not naive, said Miss Haddon. It's not a, it's a large-scale problem, though. It's not large-scale, though. That's rubbish, it is. If it wasn't just corrupt staff or civilians who brought drugs in, prisoners can be paid thousands of pounds to return very quickly when they are released on licence, so they can keep the drugs coming on in the inside, she said. They'll be released on licence, but then make sure they do something which will mean they are arrested and returned to prison, but they will have the drugs hidden on them. Other routes into the prison are from people throwing them over the wall. In those packages will be phones and drugs, she added. Miss Hayden said the visitors to the prison will bring drugs and phones in and they have increasingly found that drugs like spice will be secreted within paper sent as letters. We found this was happening so we so acted to stop it. Now instead they will send drugs in legal letters to prisoners which we are not allowed to open, Rule 39s. So we have to check with the individual solicitor's office to check they actually did send this letter or not. Uh, we'll close down a route and a new one will open. Uh, it's a continuing problem we face. The problem of the tide of drugs entering HMP Hallfield has been well documented. So HMP Hallfield, hold on, HMP Bristol, but they've put HMP Hallfield, has been well documented. It must be known as Hallfield locally. Uh, it has been well documented before, but it's been put in the spotlight with the inquest of the death of Kevin Crehan, which began on Monday. Toxicology tests revealed Crehan had five prescription drugs in his system, methadone, diazepam, mirtazapin, mirtazapin, gabapentin, and pregabalin. Pregabalin is a very popular drug. Uh, it's a strong pain killer, um, and people break it down and snort it. Only one of those, uh, methadone, he was actually prescribed. And even then, both the toxicologist and the home office pathologist told the inquest it was likely on the balance of probabilities the amount of methadone in his system indicated he'd taken extra on top of the 60 mils a day he had been prescribed. The inquest continues. Now, shocking case, guys. I mean, really, really sad case. Um, my thoughts and prayers are with uh, Kevin Crehan's family. Uh, God bless him. May rest in peace. Um, 
prisoners that end up on drug-free wings or, or or detox wings there's normally more drugs on them wings than there are on normal wings i know that sounds crazy you're thinking it's a detox wing the detoxing they've asked to go on that detox wing there's normally more drugs on the detox wing than there are on other wings that's just prisoners know that prison officers know that it's not a secret uh, so i'm not blowing the lads up um sad sad case guys prison officers bringing the drugs in now, like I say, as I used to be involved with a drug trade and stuff like that, and I say, I'm a sh I say that to my shame and to my detriment and stuff, um, seeing what drugs does to people. When you're in prison, because you're not getting as much as the drug, don't get, don't get it twisted, there are a lot of drugs in prison, but you're not getting as much as you would on the out, so your tolerance to the drugs are reduced. Um, but then when you start taking them again, you take higher and higher and higher amounts to chase that high, and that's where, sadly, overdoses can take place. Um, of the, it was, the five prescription drugs that were in his system... He was only actually uh, given one, and that was the uh, methadone. So he was obviously on a script because, he, for those that don't know, methadone is a substitute for heroin, uh, just like Subitex uh, is as well. Um, but he was, he was on his methadone, which is a green liquid, and it, like I said, he was on a 60 milligrams a day. Um, so because you've got to remember, if you're in prison and you're coming off a drug, you've got to wean yourself off that. You can do funny things to these people's bodies. Now, I've never taken drugs, tried weed once, um, but yeah... It, and the prison officers are bringing it in. It's fueling the violence within the prison because where you've got debt, where you've got contraband, sorry, you've got debt. Where you've got debt, you've got fear, intimidation, bullying, and violence. Um, and like I say, it's just a sad, sad state of affairs. And like I say, it's tragic that another prisoner, obviously, we're talking December 2016, but it's still raw. Uh, God bless Kevin Crehan and my thoughts and prayers with his family. Um, some people go to prison for rehabilitation um and are leaving as addicts or worse in body bags now it looks like he's battled the addiction the two pictures that i can see um you can see it when he was more full of face he was fatter in the face and then you can see as the drugs have taken hold that he's, he's become gone his cheekbones are sucked in and you can sort of like tell that you, be, you can tell when someone's like addictions and addiction is not a funny thing guys at all i don't Addiction um, is people use it for many different reasons in prison or in general, and it can stem from childhood uh, as a coping mechanism to deal with um, certain traumatic events in their life. Some people drink, some people take drugs, some people get angry, some people self-harm. Um, addiction is not a laughing matter. And I know people say, oh, people choose to do drugs. Yeah, but you've got to look at why. They can get peer pressure into it in prison, bullied into it, spiked, um, they can use it as a coping mechanism to escape the reality of prison and the, the reality of the surroundings. It can be a cure for boredom. Uh, that sounds crazy, but that's a reality as well. Um, and like I say, this prisoner, Kevin Cree, and God bless him, left prison in a body bag. That corrupt officer got two and a half years in prison. Um, do you know what I mean? He'd do, what, a year and a quarter, and then he'd be out. And that's if he doesn't get released on tag. Um, crazy, crazy, guys. Crazy, crazy stuff. Let me know what you think about the story. There's a link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.